Well, hello and welcome to everybody joining us here today. Thank you so much for uh, joining us live. We are going to be talking about seven social media trends you can't afford to miss in 2017. It is hard to believe that we are just a few short days away from a new year. I'm Rebecca Radice with Post Planner. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer, and we have a whole lot we're excited to share with you uh, about the future of social media, what you can look forward to next year and throughout this we would love it if you would uh, share if you're active on Twitter uh, share anything we talk about here today you can find post planner at post planner uh, and then myself at Rebecca Radis and please use the hashtag PP like post planner live L I V E and we've got a really special giveaway for you if you're one of those people tweeting out there uh, and then we also have some uh, a fantastic bonus for everybody just for being here today so today you're gonna learn seven social media trends that you need to leverage now every single one of these whether you're a personal brand whether you're a small business a local business whether you're uh, a big brand every single one of these is something that you can leverage within your business and i'm going to tell you why you can't afford to overlook these trends why they're going to be so incredibly important in 2017 and then we're going to get into the nitty-gritty so how to implement each of these trends into your business and then simple ways that you can get started immediately so so as soon as we're done here today, you're going to have ideas that you can really implement right into your business. And as I said, you want to stick around until the end for that uh, free surprise and then an offer you cannot refuse. So let's go ahead and let's jump in into our first trend. Uh, and this is a trend we've seen a lot of over the years, um, but definitely picked up steam. And the way you're going to be able to utilize this trend is a little bit different in uh, 2017. And it's uh, just crazy when you take a look at the social media landscape, how dramatically it has changed over just the last couple of years. But more than that, what it's going to look like over the next several years. So Salesforce found that by 2020, customers will manage 85% of their relationships with businesses without talking to a human. Pretty crazy to think, isn't it? That you know, for some of us that come from a background of traditional marketing, it has always been that. It's been that one on one. It's been that, you know, face to face. So it's been that interaction. Um, and more than that, uh, customer experience by 2020 is said that it's going to overtake price and product as the key brand differentiator. So, you know, it's without a doubt that consumer behavior has really shifted. Uh, and with that must go our tactics and our strategies. Um, but I think the confusing part for so many still today is, all right, so that's great, but how do we capture that attention if, uh, those relationships with businesses are going to be just uh, interactive online. How do we capture their attention and how do we win that battle over their dollars? And that is getting that personalized experience is, is it's really going to come in. Uh, it's providing an intentional and very specifically designed experience during their decision making process. And if you haven't considered exactly what that looks like, well, all you have to do is look around you, especially as we've just come through uh, the Christmas season, the holiday season, to see what that personalized experience really feels like. So this is uh, a sample ad, an example from Nordstrom. Drum, one of my favorite retailers, and it's because of that what? That Nordstrom experience that they offer. And you can see here this ad I landed 
uh, on their website, it said, let's get personal. And I could actually move away from the recommendations that they were just giving to everybody and anybody. And I could shop specific recommendations that were designed just for me. And 45% of online shoppers say that they are more likely to shop on a site that does exactly this, that offers personalized recommendations. So for you, uh, it's going to be more important in 2017 as a company to get back to that feeling of a one-on-one -on -one marketing experience. So rather than casting a wider net, which I think we've talked a lot about uh, in marketing previously and years before, where that hope was you could get your your content, your message, your product in in front of as many people as possible. Today, it's about getting the right message in front of the right people so that you can engage with them, you can connect with them by providing that relevant content at the exact right time. So understanding when there is a need and then customizing your content. So similar to what Nordstrom did here, uh, and customizing that content so that it speaks to their exact need. And of course, we've been seeing a lot of this within the social media world, but it's gonna be incredibly important in 2017 that we really take that next step in personalization. So three steps for you to implement this strategy or this idea. Uh, step number one, is to focus on the key moments of your buyer's journey. So really consider how are consumers, how are customers getting to you? You know, the, the way that our customers show up at our digital front door, very different today. And if you don't understand what those key moments are, and I'm gonna talk a lot more about that and help you kind of strategize on what those key moments are, it's gonna be very, very difficult for you to identify what it is that they're looking for. It's going to be very uh, difficult for you to uh, provide that information or that content that's going to be step number two, which is going to inspire them to buy what you're selling. So you really need to almost look over their shoulder. You need to get a sneak peek into who they are, what they do, why they do it, and then what they're looking for when they're looking for your product or service so that you can begin to serve up that exact right content at that exact time. Uh, and then step number three for you is gonna be meeting them where they're spending their time. And we've talked a lot about this in in previous webinars about uh, the idea of being everywhere and the idea of being on every single social platform. Um, and we really push back on that whole idea. Uh, we would prefer that you focus on your strengths. So focus on those social networks that are truly supporting you. Look to your analytics. Take the time uh, before you put together your entire 2017 strategy to analyze, has Facebook been your biggest supporter? Has Twitter, maybe Instagram? Uh, and does it make sense for you to continue on putting as much time and energy into those social networks as maybe you did in 2016? Uh, as we know, a successful strategy is an agile one. That means you're not just sitting, uh, hoping that the strategy that brought you to where you are today is the same one that's going to get you to where you want to go tomorrow. You have to continuously take a look at how things are performing. How are your Facebook posts performing? And that means everything from the type of content that you're sharing to the times that you're actually sharing that content at. So looking at your Facebook insights, looking at your Twitter analytics, going out to Google and identifying what type of content has really performed well for you. And then and also, what type of devices are they using to interact with your company, to interact with you on these social networks or on your website or on your blog? Because that's going to be terribly important, too, as you go forward, as you start to create more content 
that is specifically designed maybe for people on those particular devices. Uh, and then beyond that, it's creating and really leveraging micro moments in all of those steps. And, uh, you know, if we uh, haven't talked about micro moments in the past, or if you haven't heard about micro moments in the past, uh, it really takes the importance of creating a personalized experience, what we were just discussing, uh, to that next level. And much of that, as I said, comes from an ability to really understand um, what are those moments where your audience is turning to any search, let's just say it's Google, and they are saying, I want to know, I want to go, I want to do, I want to buy. And they're researching your company or your competition. And it's in that moment, that moment where they're asking those questions, where they're deciding if they're going to go this way or that way, where you have that opportunity. You have that opportunity to really win that particular moment, win their hearts, win their minds, uh, and, and bring them over to you as a new user or as a new buyer or a consumer, rather than having them meet you know, exactly their needs is found within your competition. So let me give you an idea what micro moments really mean to you and how you can find those micro moments within your own business. So we talked a little bit about the different devices and mobile centric searches would be important to you uh, because they're going to help you learn what your audience wants when they're using their smartphones. So you can go out and you can take a look at your analytics. So you can look at Google you can ask your team, you can do uh, your own research to really better understand uh, how, how many searches are happening on mobile devices as opposed to desktop. Uh, you can also look at most popular questions. So that you can do this in a variety of ways to really better understand what is your audience asking? What are they looking for when they're coming to you? So uh, if you have an internal sales team, you you could maybe ask them to begin compiling that data so you could test uh, and really identify what those popular questions are. Um, what are the most frequently asked questions? If you've been marketing your business online for any amount of time, whether you're a consultant or an agency, you're a big brand, um, you've probably been answering those questions for quite a while. And that gives you a great opportunity to start creating content specifically designed to answer those questions. And some tools that uh, we love to use at Post Planner is advanced Twitter search. If you haven't done an advanced Twitter search where you can really start to dig into those frequently asked questions, it's a great place to start. Uh, BuzzSumo, another great tool that helps you look at your competition. What questions are they responding to? What questions are they answering? And you can look at their blog just to get a really good feel for that. A lot of content that we're creating on our blog at Post Planner, for example, is spawned off of top questions, those frequently asked questions that we get asked all the time. So think about how you can answer those, how you can create content uh, that becomes the solution to that problem. Um, another idea is consumer surveys. Now, I think we're all probably very familiar with the old school idea of surveys. And I would encourage you to flip the switch on what we know consumer surveys to be and really reframe uh, how you're asking questions uh, of your audience and get hyper specific in what you're asking around your company, around, you know, maybe brand perception, a product or certain features. Let me just give you a an example of this, you know, dependent on exactly uh, your industry or your line of work, let's just say 
and diet coach. Now, instead of asking what your audience's biggest diet struggle is, is which is you know a pretty broad question, right? Well, why not find out how your audience is consuming health and diet tips? So where are they doing this and how are they doing that? So for example, are they reading an article or are they watching videos on YouTube? Um, once you better understand this, you can create those micro moments. You can create that content that is specifically designed. So if you know, a, it's abundantly clear to you that your audience is going to video to get their health and diet tips, and all of a sudden your strategy is clear, you know that you could create an entire video series around those diet tips and be able to serve up that content, not only in the way or the type that your audience is looking for, but it's going to give you a very specific insight into the social network that they're using to find that information um, and give you a lot better uh, insight into where you should be spending your time as well. And then finally, in-store interviews, uh, more designed micro moments for a, a local brand. Um, but if you have retail locations, if you're a local shop, um, you've certainly seen that people are using their mobile phones in store aisles. You've seen them walking through and they're doing research right then and there while they're in your store. So talk to these people, get in, uh, in touch with them and find out what are they seeking in those moments when they're standing in your store and they're looking on mobile. I'm, I'm certain you've done this. I know I have where uh, maybe I'm standing in Target and I'm looking at something and I'm I'm thinking to myself, hmm, I wonder if this product is better than this product. And real quick, I'll do a, you know, a quick search on A versus B to take a look at reviews, take a look at what other people are saying about that product if I haven't done that before I get to the store. So you want to find out exactly what your customers are seeking and then how satisfied were they with the results that they found. Um, and while you can use this on a local level, you could certainly use this uh, online as well. So as people are searching for specific uh, information around your business, did they find the right answers? And this is another great way for you to better understand if the content that you're providing is truly valuable to your audience. And then making empathy a rule. Uh, you know, we've talked a lot about empathy, certainly as a company at Post Planner, but definitely within uh, the marketing world and in social media. But, uh, you know, empathy to me is, is not something that you just overnight, it happens. There are certainly when you look at companies, as you look at brands, uh, many have emerged as far more empathetic and certainly within your dealings, probably with their uh, customer support team, you have felt that. You have felt that they actually get who you are as a customer, that they actually care. Um, and it's been proven that you know companies that are succeeding um, use empathy as a rule. Top 10 uh, companies in the global empathy index increased in value more than twice as much, twice as much, that's huge, as the bottom 10 and generated 50% more earnings. So this goes back to uh, understanding what the needs of your audience are, what they're looking for, uh, and then truly putting yourself in their shoes uh, and going that extra mile to not just provide an experience, but to provide that customer or customized experience and one that truly gives them uh, exactly what they were looking for at that exact right moment. So trend number two, this one really excites me. Um, there's just so much opportunity for all of us as companies to tap into wearable, expiring, and augmented content. And my guess is you're probably using one of these, but maybe not all of them. Um, and, you know, I'm not 
not encouraging you to jump out there and start using all of them at once, but there are little ways that you can dip your toe into all three of those, whether it's wearable, whether it's expiring, maybe it's augmented. And if you're not sure what I'm talking about with uh, all of these, well, just look at Instagram stories. So what happens with an Instagram story? It's shared for uh, a certain amount of time and then it's gone, right? So it creates that sense of urgency where your audience wants to know, you know, they want to know what you shared. They want to take a look at your most recent story and then they want to make sure that they haven't missed out on anything else. Uh, Geo filters on Snapchat, an another opportunity, Snapchat spectacles. Um, there's uh, been, uh, I think, a lot of uh, talk around Snapchat spectacles and the pros and cons. And I think there's a very heated debate on both sides. Um, but again, another opportunity that if your audience is on Snapchat, well, there you go. Well, augmented reality. Uh, we saw the huge popularity in how Pokemon uh, took off you know, last summer and how many people came back to Pokemon after years and years and years. Uh, and then how many people weren't even familiar with the original game, um, but incredibly excited to hop on to Pokemon as augmented reality, as the opportunity to get out uh, and really interact and engage with others on a completely different level. And all of these are opportunities that your business can also take advantage of. So wearable, it's really uh, exciting again to see what that forecasted value of wearable devices looks like, where we've come from since 2012, where we're headed to in over just the next year, year and a half. Um, it, it's, uh, it's something that it, as the ability and the capabilities expand and uh, more opportunity opens up to us as companies to really be able to tap into that. Now, I think uh, if you're a marketer, if you're a smaller business, expiring content offers the quickest way to uh, really start to create content that does tap into that fear of missing out, that taps into that need to keep up with what's going on with your company, what's happening. There's so many different ways uh, that I see expiring content being used. Everything from a product launch to your latest blog post post to uh, maybe tips about the latest changes over on Instagram. So how to take advantage of expiring content or how people are using video on Instagram. So a lot of different ways to not only interact, but educate your audience into how to use this uh, these new updates or this type of content. And while Facebook remains uh, the big boy on the block, the most used social media brand among all ages, um, it's interesting to see that among 12 to 24, so if this is your target audience, it's been overtaken by Snapchat with Instagram close behind. Uh, and with Instagram having the massive updates that they've had and looking very much like Snapchat, Snapchat these days. Uh, my guess is, is that's going to continue to shift even further. So, you know, you've really got to take a good look also at your demographics. Who is your target audience? Is it that uh, 12 to 24? Is it, you know, 25 to 35, maybe 35 to 45? And understanding what type of content they're looking for and also what social networks they're interacting with you on. So that goes back to those surveys. It goes back to asking your audience, and we talked about this in uh, a previous webinar where we shared a lot of details about how to do exactly this, how to ask your audience where they want to interact with you, where they're spending their time. So is it Snapchat? Is it Facebook? Um, and is it expiring content? Do they even care about Instagram stories. You know, we as a team just had a conversation about this in the last week about uh, where we're spending our time in 2017. And it's always good to have that reflection based off of data uh, and what has succeeded for you over the last year. 
So what are you going to do more of? Um, what are you going to back off from that maybe didn't provide the results that you had hoped for? Uh, and then what are you going to add to that marketing mix in 2017? And Snapchat, Instagram stories, this could definitely be an area of opportunity for you if you haven't jumped in yet. So just a, a few ideas in how you could capitalize on these immediately. Uh, do bite-sized videos about your company's vision. So what create what caused you to create the company that you started? Why did you do that in the first, you know, first reason? Did you do it to scratch your own itch? Um, that's the reason Post Planner was created. Um, our CEO, Josh Parkinson, said managing social media was a total frustration and being able to find content that you could actually predict your results was impossible. And so thus, you know, a post planner was born. So think about what's the reason, what's your why? What gets you out of bed every day? And how could you share that on Snapchat or Instagram? Um, do interviews with employees or influencers. I love to see uh, these spotlights that companies like Sprout Social do with their influencers where they do just a quick two minute video, not even that, um, you know, across some of their social networks. And then they chunk those down into 10, 15 seconds for other social networks, where it's just a quick little snapshot of who this person is, what they do, and their value to the Sprout social community. So think about how you can leverage those relationships. Uh, and not only share those, on Snapchat or Instagram, but across all of your social networks. Um, giving a behind the scenes look into your business. So what do you do every day and how do you do it? People love um, to be able to see exactly how you walk through a process or how you get from point A to point Z, uh, you know, within a, a particular um, program or strategy that you run on a daily basis. Offer your tips and advice. You have years of experience that you can be sharing. Um, you can also tap into trending topics. So what's happening right now? What are we talking about that's relevant to your business and relevant to your audience that you could share your advice around? You could give your thoughts around because as we know, there's a whole lot of noise uh, across social media, but when you can offer uh, your your view, your feedback, um, your maybe future casting into what it's going to look like, because you know this huge update just happened, that's where people really want to engage with you. That's where they really get interested when you come at it from a very different perspective. And of course, you can showcase your product, uh, your service, and Maybe it's something that you launched last year, but hey, it's evergreen content. You want to bring that all back around. Use Snapchat, use Instagram stories to put that into bite-sized, snackable content that tells that story of your product or service in a very different way for a very different audience. So just a few ideas that you can get started on immediately to get using that those different pieces of wearable, snackable, uh, and that, that short-term content. So trend number three, combine science and social, something we talk about all the time uh, at Post Planner. So 88% of marketers want to know how to measure their social media ROI. But get this, only 42% of marketers say they're actually able to measure it. So you can see the great divide. There's a huge divide between those that actually understand what they're tracking, what they're measuring, and what the true value of their actions are, as opposed to those that are just doing the same old thing every day, hoping for different results. Or worse yet, they're doing the same thing every day and have no idea 
what the results even are because they never pay attention. They never go to their analytics or they never go take a look at, um, you know, their Facebook insights. And so they have no idea what type of content their audience is actually looking for. So a couple of ways you can get started with this. Uh, first of all, you want to measure your ROI. And we've gotten very specific. So I, I'm going to stay a little high level today, but if you want more specifics, We've got a couple of other webinars that we've gone, uh, really done deep dives into measuring your ROI and how to set your business goals. So if you don't know what you're working towards, going to be really hard to know when you actually get there, right? What what does success look like for you? Uh, and at Post Planner, we use what are called OKRs, objectives and key results. So we take that big objective, that big, bold goal that we want to achieve, and then we break it down into those key results. So what does, uh, first of all, what are we going to have to do every single day to achieve achieve that objective. And then what does success actually look like? So we get very, very uh, specific. And so I would encourage you that if you've set goals in the past and they were incredibly broad or almost a little ambiguous where eh, you didn't really know what it meant or how you were going to get there, uh, that's where getting very specific is going to help you. And let me just give you an example of that. So let's just say you are growing your Facebook page and you set an, a, a, um, a, an objective of you want to double your Facebook growth uh, in 2017. Well, what does double look like to you? Have you actually sat down and figured out metrics are uh, that truly matter to you. More than likely, doubling your growth has a lot to do with engagement. So it's it's identifying what type of content you're going to share, uh, back to uh, figuring out what your best times to post are, all the way to figuring out the content that's converting, taking people over to your website, to your blog, to uh, those landing pages where they can actually opt in. You've got a, a call to action. So you need to get very, very specific in what those goals are, what you're truly trying to achieve. Because once you can do that, then you can start measuring your return on investment. And then from there, you can start to improve tactics that aren't delivering real value. So measuring your ROI, never. I don't care what anybody has ever said, set it and forget it type of situation. Uh, you need to look at that data every single day and you need to make decisions, hard decisions about is this uh, really working for me or is it not? I know as marketers, a lot of times, you know, we, cre we create a piece of content, uh, whether it's a visual, whether it's a video, whether it's a blog post, and we love it, right? You're, you're like, oh my God, I have put my heart and soul into this and it's the best piece of content I have ever put out there. And what happens? It's met with a, a just that deafening silence of nobody sharing it, nobody engaging with it. So the data doesn't lie, but we as marketers, we can sure lie to ourselves, right? If we don't look um, at, at the harsh reality of how our content is performing. So you really have to look at how is it doing? How is it performing? Um, is it delivering the results that I was looking for? Is it moving me closer towards my business goals every single day? And if the answer is no, then you need to ditch it. You need to ditch that, that strategy or that tactic that all you're doing is spinning your wheels and wasting your time on because that's where we see that huge lack of productivity within our businesses or we see that situation where at the end of the day or at the end of the week, you scratch your head and you're like, what the heck did I do this week? Um, because you're not getting any closer to your business goals. And it's simply because you're not taking the time to truly measure what's working, uh, adjust on that, and, and then continue to iterate upon that. And if I haven't stressed it enough, it's being data-driven, um, not just randomly throwing content out there, 
and hoping that it's going to work, but analyzing and posting that proven content. And that's exactly what Post Planner, as I said, was created for. It's a way for you to get in there and find content that's done well over and over and over again, and then be able to go into your Facebook insights and to take a look at how those posts actually perform. So you can see here five recent posts of ours and I could have thought that you know one of those was going to do far better than others but what is that that's just me guessing that's me going with a, a gut feel and not actually looking at how how did our reach do did we actually get the engagement that we were looking for did that content actually resonate with our audience and that's where you can start to get far more specific in the type of content that you're creating. You can see that, wow, you know, videos are outperforming everything else you're doing. So creating more video is a direction you need to head in 2017. And using Post Planner, you know, it just simplifies your entire process. So we have, if you're not familiar with Post Planner, we have this area within Post Planner called Find, where it's popular content. It's content that we've gone out and we have found thousands of feeds across the web. It's everything from Facebook pages to uh, Twitter feeds to RSS feeds, and we've bucketed them. We've put them into categories like quotes or engaging content or interesting or funny, so memes, um, and then business related or marketing related or top news. Um, all of those categories that you've told us are important to your business. And what we've done is we go through and we find that content, we curate that content, and then we put it into a predictive format for you. So if you notice every single one of these articles here has some stars right below it. And that is our star rating system. And that star rating system is your predictability. So it could have anywhere from one to five stars and five stars says, woo, this content, we knocked it out of the park. Whoever wrote it knocked it out of the park or, you know, posted it on Facebook. It just performed incredibly well. And so you're able to come in here and see all of this content that's already performed well. And based off of the fact that it's going it, to, it's content that your audience would be interested in, it's content that you know is a type of content you're already sharing. You can share that with predictability, with thought, with data and science behind that instead of just throwing that content at the wall and hoping that it sticks. So trend number four, automation. We've talked about this, what, for as long as social media has been around, automation, the good, bad, and the ugly has been around as well. And I am a firm believer in the power of automation in, in moderation. So using it correctly to really support and then help you grow everything that you're doing. And uh, Gleanster found that 79% of top performing companies have been using marketing automation for more than two years. So those companies that are getting predictable results at this, this point, those companies that are succeeding at social media are using automation to support their marketing efforts. So here's a few steps for you, a few ways that you can use automation within your business immediately. First of all, automate your evergreen content. So we talked a little bit about if you've been in business for any length of time, if you've been writing content, creating content, more than likely you have a lot of evergreen content sitting at your fingertips. Well, don't let that go to waste. Don't just let that uh, be a situation where you post it out there, you tweet it out there once. Make sure you keep it in front of a whole new audience over and over again. And uh, you can do that within Post Planner. There's so many great tools out there that allow you to do this where you can recycle this content and get it out there in front of a whole new audience and at a completely different time. And I would encourage you, if you're interested in learning more about our recycle feature, 
Uh, or our find feature that I just talked about. We have three terrific webinars um, that we've put together that specifically speak to uh, the top three features within Post Planner, find, plan, and post. And we'll get you those links. If you're interested, just tweet us, let us know. Uh, and we're happy to share so you can figure out how to use those uh, specific features in 2017. Uh, another one of my favorite tools is IFTTT, if this, then that. And it's just basically setting up automation between different social media networks. So you're triggering something to happen. So if this happens, so in this example, if, you know, let's say you share, um, if you post to Instagram, if that's your if, then what's going to happen? You're going to share that Instagram picture over. Twitter, you're going to tweet that out. So you can create recipes like that with if this, then that. Again, we did um, an entire webinar around automation, around um, IFTTT, and shared a ton of recipes. So another great one for you to go back and take a look at if you're interested in learning more about the hundreds of thousands of different recipes that are available. And then finally, using automation to post at the ideal time. So it's going in, taking a look at your Facebook insights, taking a look at uh, your analytics and what are those best times to post, the best times to tweet, and then using automation to not only be able to free up your time so you can start to get in and engage and not feel married <laughs> to your social network all the time, 24-7, um, but also to solve your time zone problems. So if you have an international audience, it might be difficult for you to tweet or post 24 seven. And that's where automation really comes in handy is where you can start to schedule those times, uh, drop your content in, be able to get that content out there at your best times to post, uh, and then continuously do that. So then you can come in and you can uh, comment back, respond, ask questions, really get that engagement going. Trend number five, social video. We've talked a little bit about video, but 2016, if 2016 was the year of live video, 2017, wow, watch out. Uh, it's just gonna be an incredible year of uh, more use by businesses and brands of live video. And it's interesting to see Bright Co found that social video generates 12 hundred percent more shares than text and images combined so a missed opportunity if you're not using social uh, video within your business 2017 is a great opportunity for you to dive in and i love social video for so many different reasons um, it takes us back to what we first talked about creating that personalized experience where all of a sudden you can add further context to your content you can let your audience get to know you uh, in a deeper more meaningful way in a way that you hadn't been able to maybe through graphics or just a text-based conversation. Uh, it takes us back to that empathy as a rule where you can uh, empathize with the struggles, with the frustrations of your audience by becoming that solution to their problems. Um, and then it, it takes that community and relationship building to a completely different level to a place where it is that one-on-one -on -one conversation between you and your audience where you're sitting there and you're saying to them, hey, I get you, I get what's going on, I get what, what you're dealing with, and this is what I've created specifically for you, or this is what I'm doing, or this is how I'm doing it, and this is how I'm doing it and how you can do it too. So a lot of different ways that you can use social media or social video uh, to create those relationships within your business. And Peg Fitzpatrick um, does such a terrific job with live video. This was one 
that she did with Adobe Spark uh, recently, and she was helping them uh, tease and then even promote a product launch. So they had added in a new feature uh, within Adobe Video, and she was showing exactly how she uses it, kind of her tips into uh, how to go about using it, and then also helping uh, Adobe gain a little bit of extra exposure. So for you, uh, there's several different ways that you can use this. You could tease something within uh, your business. You could you could tease something that's upcoming. Maybe uh, it's a webinar. Maybe it is a product launch. Or you could tap into the power of uh, influencers to be able to help you do exactly that, where they could go live on Facebook, they could go live on Instagram, they could do a you, you know YouTube. Um, so many different ways for you to tap into that social video. Mari Smith, another one. Um, obviously, we see Mari on live video all the time. Um, whether she's sharing a quick or a practical tip, uh, maybe it's actionable advice about how to use a new feature. This one, she was talking about uh, Facebook live video integrated into Messenger and just ideas on how you can actually use that within your business. It's a great way for you to take that next step up with what you're teaching your audience. What are you training them to do? And what would they love to be able to do more of? They're just kind of stuck. You know, maybe they can't see it in their head. They can't visualize it. You can help them take that next step by showing them the exact steps. And of course, all of this is um, with that purpose in mind. So is it in line with the goals of your company? Is it in line with your marketing goals? And is it supporting all of that other content that you're creating? So if they want to learn more about how to use Facebook Live Video after your live video on Facebook, well, they can pop over to your blog or maybe you've written an email about it. So make sure that you're not siloing your, uh, your, your content or your strategies, that every single one of them is in support of the other. And I think Mari is an excellent example of that. So if you haven't started with live video, here's a quick checklist that we put together for you. First of all, know your topic. Um, I can't stress this enough before you go live. How many of you, and I know if I could see you raise your hand, probably every single one of us would raise our hands, that we've seen people hop on Facebook Live with really no thought behind what they were going to talk about. They're stumbling, they're mumbling, um, they're just fumbling all over the place with their content, and you're like, eh, bored, move on. Um, it happens all the time. So you really want to know your topic. Focus on three main points. So focus on what those three key takeaways are going to be for your audience. What do you want them to leave learning or knowing by the time you're done? And then keep your answers short, concise, and always, always, always get to the point. So I like to make notes. I'm a note taker. I'll write out what my three main points are. I'll write out uh, what those, you know, kind of thoughts are, my answers, and I'll keep it very short. I'm not scripting. Um, they're more just talking points, so I stay on track and I stay focused. And you really want to avoid complex industry speak, so no jargon. Uh, it confuses people. You lose people very, very quickly. Uh, so if you haven't sat down and thought about what is the jargon that we say all the time that maybe my audience wouldn't get. You want to sit down and, and think through that, that as well. And then write that outline like I talked about. Prepare if you need to. If you're nervous, if you're uncomfortable, talk it out. Um, one of the ways I love doing it uh, is getting in front of a mirror and just talk it out. If you don't like listening to yourself, this is going to be a good way for you to get comfortable with that. Uh, you can also record yourself. You know, so many different apps that you can record yourself uh, talking it out. And then knowing your audience, so speaking directly to their needs, going back to that customer journey, creating that personalized experience. And as we all know, you only have one opportunity to make a great first impression. So smile, relax, have fun. 
uh, and more than anything, just be you. When you try to be something that you're not, that's when you get uncomfortable and nervous and you trip all over yourself. Um, so when you are writing things out, when you're thinking about what you want to talk about, put it in your own words, put it in your own voice, uh, talk it out so you're comfortable with it. And then when you get on live, ooh, that's going to reduce your stress factor greatly. But of course, it. <laughs> going live on anything is always nerve wracking when you first get started. So that's why practice, practice, practice uh, will get you to a, a comfort level a whole lot faster. So trend number six, omni-channel strategy. I recently had the chance to talk about this at Inbound 2016 uh, HubSpot in Boston. Um, their conference, huge conference uh, devoted to inbound marketing. And I have been beating this drum for quite some time about uh, creating more than just a multi-channel. We've talked about multi-channel strategies for a long time, but creating a omni-channel experience um, where we're creating that streamlined experience from not just one social network, but one device to the next as well. So ask yourself, um, how can you create that personalized and integrated experience within your own business? Well, 88% of consumers say this is why an omni-channel experience is so important to your business that they are more likely to shop with retailers that deliver that personalized cross-channel experience. And if you're not completely familiar with what that looks like or feels like let me give you just some examples so my my website if you're not familiar with it is very similar to uh, the post planner brand in the sense that whether you look at my website whether you look at my social networks anywhere you go um, the look and feel is all very similar as well as the messaging the tone uh, what i'm talking about so the type of content Post planner, same exact situation. So first of all, take a look at uh, everything that you're putting out there in uh, both the online as well as the offline. If you're a local business, you need to look at your local business as well. And is everything congruent? Is it streamlined? Can your audience just instantly tell that this is your Twitter account or this is your blog or are they scratching their head wondering, hmm, is this the same person because you haven't taken the time to create that branded experience from your logo to your colors to your fonts to that messaging um, and then those physical items is looking at uh, all of those photos and the context around that, your videos. So all of the visuals that you're creating need to have uh, that similar context around them so that there is that very similar look and feel from one uh, social network to uh, one you know website, blog, no matter how many different properties you have, it's all very, very similar. And so for you to be able to create this omni-channel experience, there's a few things that you want to do. Well, first of all, um, we're going to go back to our analytics and we're going to find potential online customers who are engaging with us, who are already actively maybe talking about us, they're tweeting about us, they're sharing our content, and maybe we haven't been as active or as proactive as we should should be with them. Now we can also look at um, those opportunities that we lost. So look at potential customers that are abandoning your shopping cart, or maybe they're bouncing off of your landing page or bouncing off of uh, a, a blog post. What's going on there? Take a look at why that's happening and how you can offer more information. So a more specific solution, a more personalized solution that's designed around their concerns. And once you start to better understand, better, you know, walk through how a customer interacts with you online, how they perceive your company, 
So listening is key to this, uh, seeing what they're talking about, seeing what they're sharing. Um, then you can start to work to improve uh, your interactions and that buying experience. Very, very difficult to improve something that you haven't taken a lot of time to really understand. So if you're not monitoring your mentions, if you're not looking at uh, your Google Analytics to see how specific specific pages are performing or how your landing pages or elements or features on your website are performing, it's going to be very different, difficult for you to improve upon that. And that's where understanding uh, how your buyers interact, how your readers interact, how your subscribers interact, and where you're losing those opportunities is going to be critical to you making those changes. And then trend number seven. So finally, our final trend is organic reach. And organic reach is, you know, something that uh, has been a concern for years, but uh, definitely been a bigger and bigger concern in 2016 with all of the updates to the Facebook algorithm. And if you're having a tough time, don't really know how to get your content seen by a larger audience, uh, 2017 is going to give you a lot of opportunity. That is the good news. Now, 66% of marketers uh, told HubSpot that improving SEO and growing their organic presence is their top inbound marketing priority. And I would be willing to bet that since they did this survey, it's probably even higher than that. Um, as I said, you know, it's only continued to become a bigger problem. And we hear it every single day at Post Planner that being able to get your content in front of your audience without having to pay to play uh, is very hard and very frustrating. Um, so a couple of, of, of tips. And um, if you haven't seen the uh, ebook that we put together, we actually worked with Simply Measured. Uh, uh, and documented our entire growth over a year's time. So we documented 12 months and every step we took to increase our engagement by 193%. And the number one thing we found quality content over the quantity of content was the most important factor when it came to growing our Facebook audience. And that would be the same across any social network within any of the content uh, that you're creating. If you're posting interesting, engaging material, your audience is naturally going to be attracted to that and want to interact with you. And on Facebook, we know how that algorithm works. Uh, if your audience is interacting with you, Facebook perceives that to uh, be that signal that, hey, that's valuable content. We're going to serve up more of that content to to your audience. So making sure that you're sharing not only the right content, but with the right people at the right time um, is going to be terribly important in 2017. And uh, another piece we found to be very, very important to increased organic reach is telling stories. Nothing new in the marketing world, right? Um, I, I think it's just more personalized stories is the key in 2017. Listening to your audience and then sharing your experience, sharing what you have found to be true or what works or uh, how you've solved that particular problem. And I'd encourage you that if you're nervous about sharing your story, if you're worried that people are going to judge, who cares? If you have an interesting story with original content, with original thoughts, that's truly going to help somebody else be able to do something better, that's going to change their life, that's going to inspire them, you need to share it. In fact, I would go so far as to say you have to share that with your audience. It's what you're there for and it's what they're expecting from you. And my good friend Ian Cleary is a perfect example of this. Ian is a giver first. Um, he just gives everything away, his knowledge, his experience, his know-how, um, and freely does it in all that he does. Uh, so if you're not connected with Ian, I would definitely encourage you to do that. 
He is a terrific example of what Giver's Gain is all about. Uh, being data-driven, I won't beat that horse any further. <laughs> We've definitely talked about that here today. Um, you've just got, got to stop guessing in 2017 what content people are going to respond to um, and start using the right tools that are going to help you find that scientifically proven content um, and stop making up, uh, you know, just different ideas of what you think is, is going to work uh, and find that scientifically proven content that's already been known to work time and time and time again. And a big part of that finding that proven content is finding that perfect content mix as well, uh, utilizing different types of content so that you are speaking to those visual learners, you're speaking to the people that are, you know, more apt to read text-based content or more likely to watch a video. So getting into the specifics of what type of content uh, is equally as important so that you're sharing that right type of content uh, at the exact right time with those right people. So to everybody that was here live today, thank you. Again, we've got a couple of things for you that uh, we are offering today. First of all, we would love it if you would join the Post Planner community and come grow your business in 2017 with Post Planner, where we help you find that best content for your audience. It's scientifically proven, goes through our algorithm and tells you this is the type of content that you should be sharing. So it takes the guesswork out of the performance of your social content and helps you to stop wasting valuable hours. We know that time um, is very limited these days and time is money. So stop wasting hours planning. Uh, get in there, you know, 30 minutes, an hour a week and plan out your entire week, maybe your whole month. Everybody's a little bit different in how they go about planning that out. And then put your top performing content on autopilot. Recycle back through uh, that proven content or that engaging content or that content that's outperformed every Everything else. And to help you do that, we are offering a, uh, a limited time offer. It's valid through December 31st. So just a few short days. We're giving you our biggest discount of the year, which is 50% our most popular plan. It's love annual for $54. So it's basically one year for the price of six months. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you a little secret because you're here live today. If there's a plan that you need outside of that, maybe our guru plan, uh, maybe you need more social networks, uh, maybe you need a little bit different functionality, all you have to do is write our customer support team, tell them that Rebecca said that you can use the coupon coupon PP Live for any of our plans. And we're going to honor that 50% off uh, through 1231. So if you want to test out Post Planner, if you've wanted to kick the tires, get a feel for what it's all about, uh, you are not going to see this offer in the new year. I absolutely guarantee that. So go ahead, take advantage of our 50% off. Use that coupon PP Live when you sign up. Just head on over to postplanner.com. You'll see pricing for all of our plans and be able to see exactly you know, which one is going to work best for you. Now, uh, love is perfect if you're a uh, social media manager, if you are a small business, maybe you're a local business, if you're an agency, if you're a brand enterprise, you're probably going to want to look at a little bit bigger plan. Like I said, if you've got you know additional social networks. Uh, but for those of you that are managing your own social media or just managing for a couple of other businesses. Love is your absolute best bet. So I look forward to seeing you over there. We also have a great giveaway for anybody that was tweeting. Um, we're going to do a random drawing and we will notify you via Twitter and via email. One lucky person is going to get a year of our Love Annual completely free. And that's just to those of you who have joined us live today. So be on the lookout for that as well. 
thank you to everybody uh, for being here today. We will notify that winner within the next 60 minutes. So you need to be paying attention uh, to Twitter um, and then we'll get you all set up. So have a wonderful rest of your week, a happy new year, and we look forward to seeing you in Post Planner.